G'day ladies and gentlemen, Scotty D49 here with you once again for another installment in the How to Play Warhammer 40,000 series where we're going through the core mechanics and rules of the game, the different ways to play Warhammer 40k and how to build your army list. Now this video is part two of how to build a Warhammer 40,000 army list. But before I get into this video and covering off what we haven't already covered, if you have not watched part one, I highly recommend that you go back, watch part one before coming and watching part two, because I'm going to be building on what I spoke about in that video in this one here. But here's what we'll be discussing in this video. We'll be talking about battlefield roles, what detachments are and how they work and the different types that are available, as well as two different examples. One that is a 50 power level Necron army list and a thousand point Death Watch army list, both of them being Battleforged as well. But ladies and gentlemen, if you do want to make sure that you're getting more of this content, feel free to hit the subscription button below and let me know what you think in the comments afterwards as well. But without further ado, let's jump into it. Alrighty, ladies and gentlemen, so first up, we're going to be talking about Battlefield roles. Now, each unit in the game is an assigned what is called a Battlefield role. What this is, it, it, is that it indicates the type of use that unit is going to have in your army list and in your games. There are nine different battlefield roles that are assigned to various units, and these are HQs, troops, elites, fast attack, flyers, heavy support, fortifications, dedicated transports, and lords of war. Now, HQs, what these guys are, they're your typical character models. Normally, you pick your warlord for your army, which is the leader of your army, from your HQ choices. These guys are going to be your characters, whether they're going to be combat uh, monsters, whether they're going to be supporting characters, giving you additional buffs to your units, or whether they're going to be all-rounders and really help benefit your units as well, having special abilities, whether they're psychers as well, or even chaplains for space marines, ethereals for tau, there's a heap of different options out there for each of the different armies that are available. Troops. Troops are your main battle line units. These guys get some special rules, what's called objective secured, which means that when they're sitting on objectives, they get priority over anything else that might be sitting on top of it to actually be holding it. So really, you need to build a solid group of troops in a couple of units in several detachments to be able to take them which we'll get into a bit further but these are your core backbone of your army elites these guys are your veterans or the specialized units in your army that you can take whether it's stern guard vets or terminators for space marines or whether it's scorpec destroyers death marks lich guard for necrons just as a couple of examples those are the kind of units that you're going to see a lot rarer on the battlefield but they can do some hefty damage. Fast attack. These are the fast elements of your army. They're going to be getting into combat or getting up the field right and proper quick, being able to maneuver quickly, whether it's via jump packs on assault marines or inceptors, or they're going to be land speeders and, and fast moving vehicles, or it could even be scarab swarms, things like that for necrons. Uh, tomb blades as well. Those are kind of the units that you should be looking for. These are your fast maneuverable elements that might be as durable and tough, but they're able to get to where they're wanting to go fast and they may be good at combat or shooting as well. And they also may have some alternate deployment because if they've got jump packs or stratagems that you can use to give them alternate deployments, most often than not, they're going to be found in fast attack. Flyers. These are aircraft, typically. Uh, they're going to be vehicles that are flying well above the table, uh, providing fire support. And they've got their own set of rules that they do follow in terms of movement and shooting penalties in terms of when you're shooting at them uh, as well to kind of protect them because you're firing up into the air from your units rather than being on the ground level. Heavy support. These guys are your monsters of firepower, whether it's going to be tanks being predators or vindicators or Lehman Russ or land raiders, or it could even be doomsday arcs and other such vehicles for both Space Marines and Necrons, for example, off the top of my head. They're bringing the firepower, they're bringing a lot of damage for their points, being able to dish out shots at high quality values, whether they're anti-tank or good anti-infantry firepower as well, or a mix of both. This is where you're gonna find a lot of vehicles 
and also a lot of heavy weapon based troops. Fortifications. These are battlefield fortifications. Really straightforward. You can have bastions, battle lines. Uh, you could even have the Macro Aquila Cannon if you really want to. The Fortress of Redemption, which is quite iconic in the game, is considered a fortification as well. Some factions will have their own fortifications, but there are a lot that are unaligned, so it means you can take them in multiple armies. Dedicated Transports. Dedicated Transports are troop transports to get your troops around on the field. Now, in terms of detachments, we'll get into how you can pull dedicated transports into your army a bit later on in the video, but really they help to get your troops from point A to point B. And generally they have restrictions where they're only infantry to go into them, or if terminators can, they can go into them, or it could even be that you only have a model count, uh, like ghost arcs uh, will be able to take necron warriors, but, um, Night Sights can teleport a lot of different troops on the field and only have a model count, I believe, from memory. But I could be wrong on that, so feel free to let me know in the comments. <laughs> uh, and then Lords of War. These are your battlefield behemoths. Not only are they going to be dishing out a lot of firepower, they are going to take a lot of firepower to take down. Think Imperial Knights, Bane Blades, Thunderhawks, big stuff, uh, Hyra Jewels, and even the big, big stomper as well for Orcs. There's, every army's got a couple of different ones they have access to, and generally they take a lot of points, they bring a lot of firepower, and they're pretty hefty to deal with on the battlefield. So each of these roles are important to consider when you're constructing your army list using detachments. Each detachment will have only a limited number of slots for each of these battlefield roles, if any at all. Number two detachments. Now, as I spoke in part one, depending on the size of the game that you're writing an army list for, will determine the maximum number of detachments that you can take for a Battleforged army list. Each attachment will have its own command cost, which will be in command points. It'll also have its own set out benefits, restrictions, and minimum number of units that you have to take in it. Now, I've personally gone through all the detachments in the core rulebook and I can tell you that I've classified each of them into one of the three following categories. Balanced, Specialist, or Auxiliary. So, we're going to jump into Balanced first. Now these are your detachments that focus on giving you a wide variety of slots to create a balanced army within the available options for each of the battlefield roles present there within the detachment. Now, the detachments that I classify as balanced are your patrol, battalion, and brigade detachments. Each of these detachments have a command benefit where if you take your warlord, so your army's leader, in that detachment, you'll actually get the same number of command points back as what the detachment costs itself, so you're effectively not paying the command cost for that detachment. Each of these detachments also has a restriction that the units in the detachment need to be from the same faction. So going back to the first video where we were talking about faction keywords, they must be using those faction keywords when they're put together in the detachments, and there can't be any understrength units in, this deta in these detachments. Each of these detachments will also allow you to take one dedicated transport for every infantry keyworded unit in this detachment. So as we were talking about earlier, Space Marine Intercessors are considered to be infantry with that keyword on their data slate. So then you can take a dedicated transport to put them in if you wish to do so. Now, the first two being the patrol and the battalion detachments have the same base requirements, needing a minimum number of HQ and troop choices taken. And then you can add additional both HQ and troops, and then also add in elites, fast attack, heavy support, and flyers to your force after you've fulfilled those minimum requirements. Now, the patrol does have a command cost of two command points and is the smallest balanced detachment that you can take. Whereas in comparison, the battalion, which is most commonly taken in the game, has a command cost of three command points and is a medium sized balanced detachment, giving you a solid amount of slots across all the HQ, the troops, Elite, Fast Attack, Heavy Support, and Flyers. However, 
the brigade detachment functions in a similar way to both the patrol and the battalion, but it does have some differences. The minimum requirements for the brigade is quite bigger because not only do you have to uh, take a minimum requirement number of HQs and troops, you've also got to take a minimum number of elites, fast attack and heavy support as well to allow you to then unlock a lot more slots for each of those battlefield roles. So it means that you can take a lot of different things within a brigade. The brigade itself has a command cost of four command points. And as I said, it is the largest balanced detachment that you can use when creating a 40K army list. Now, the brigade doesn't generally see use below 2000 points. Because of its size and the minimum requirements, it's usually used over 2,000 points. Between that 2,000 and 3,000 point uh, game size for Onslaught is where you most commonly will see it. Uh, and it's just because the minimum requirement's quite high and then you can use those extra points to get more units into the army. Now, the second style of detachments that I've classified going through the core rulebook is the Specialists. The Specialist Detachment are focused on providing an increased number of slots on a specific battlefield role with none or very limited slots for the other battlefield roles within those detachments. Now, the detachments that I classify as Specialists are the Vanguard, Outrider, Spearhead, as well as the Super Heavy Detachment. For the Vanguard, Outrider and Spearhead Detachments, they've got very similar restrictions on the detachments as what the balance do, as well as not having any command benefits though. So it means if you've got your Warlord in a Specialist Detachment, you're not gonna be getting those command points back. Each of these three detachments have a minimum requirement of a HQ, and then a minimum number of a battlefield role, depending on the detachment. So for Vanguard, you've gotta have a minimum number of elites. For an Outrider Detachment, a minimum number of fast attack. And for Spearhead, a minimum number of heavy support. Now, these three detachments will have a number of additional slots available for those three depending. So an additional number of slots for elites in Vanguard, an additional number of fast attack slots in Outrider, an additional number of heavy support in the Spearhead, but that will come at a cost of a reduced amount of battlefield role slots for your HQs, troops, and the other slots that the detachment isn't focused on. Each of the Vanguard, the Outrider, and Spearhead detachments have a command cost of three command points. So it means if you are wanting to take this style of detachment, you're gonna be paying for it with no way to actually get your points back. Now, the super heavy detachment solely focuses on taking multiple Lords of War units for an army, with a minimum of three and up to a maximum of five. Now, the detachment has no command benefits at all and has got a command cost that you choose. You can choose either to pay three command points or six command points. However, if you only choose to pay the three command point cost, for the detachment, you cannot include any Lords of War that have got the Titanic keyword. So it means you are limiting yourself to the units that you can take as Lords of War for this detachment if you don't pay the additional 3 CP to make it 6 CP cost to take the Titanics. So really, those are the specialist one that you're really only taking if you're playing a certain army or if you're wanting to build a specific style of list focusing on one of those three slots for the Vanguard, Outrider, and Spearhead detachments. The third ones up are the Auxiliary Detachments. What these detachments are, they are more focused on adding additional elements to your army rather than allowing you to create an entire army list within the detachment, much different to what the Balanced or the Specialist detachments are able to do. These detachments do include the Supreme Command, the Super Heavy Auxiliary, the Fortification Network, and the Auxiliary Support Detachments. Now, the Supreme Command Detachment is quite a unique detachment in itself, where it has a restriction on only being able to take either one HQ or one Lord of War choice, and that choice must have either the Primarch, the Demon Primarch, or the Supreme Commander keyword on that unit's data slate and it must also be taken as your army's Warlord in addition to that. So it means that your Warlord isn't going to be in one of the main detachments, it's in the super, 
to the Supreme Command Detachment. However, the Detachment does have a command cost of zero command points, and it has a quite unique command benefit, where you get to choose one of the following. You either get four additional command points if your army contains any brigades you get, uh, or you can get three additional command points if your army contains any battalions, or you can get two additional command points if your army contains any patrol detachments. So that means that you can take a patrol, battalion, or brigade, and then at the same time, you can also take a supreme command detachment, and you've got two detachments used, and you're not spending any command points across both of those detachments. The Super Heavy Auxiliary Detachment allows you to take a single Lord of War unit. The command cost for it is three command points and the detachment doesn't have any restrictions or command benefits. So it's taking a single Super Heavy and adding it to your army for an additional supporting element. The Fortifications Network Detachment allows you to take battlefield fortifications, whether that's trenches, whether that's a, a bastion, uh, an Aegis defense line, things like that. Uh, it's got a command cost of one command point, and you can take between one and three fortifications. However, it does also have a really interesting restriction and benefit to it as well. The restriction is that you're only able to take one of these detachments in your army, and your warlord can't be taken in this detachment. So you can't make a fortification, your warlord doesn't make sense. It's actually got to be a person on the battlefield able to lead your troops into battle. However, the command benefit is that if all the fortifications in the detachment are from the same faction as your chosen warlord, you get one additional command point, paying for the command point that you spent to take the detachment in the first place. So it means that if your faction does have faction-specific fortifications, you can get that command point back very easily. And the last detachment we're going to talk about is the Auxiliary Support Detachment. Now, this one allows you to add a single unit of either HQ, Troop, Elite, Fast Attack, Heavy Support, Flyer, or Dedicated Transport to your army list for the command cost of two command points. So if you really just want to add one additional unit from one of those slots and not have to take the minimum requirements for any of the additional detachments, you can take this single unit and pay two command points to do so. So that covers up all of the detachments and generally... When building army lists, I'm more than likely seeing the balanced ones used with the rare occurrence of the specialized ones being used to create army lists. So I'm not going to leave you high and dry in just talking through and explaining what each of these detachments and how to go about constructing an army list is all about. I'm going to give you two examples, which is the 50 power level Necron army list and the 1000 point Death Watch army list. So, I'm going to step aside, we're going to have it on the screen here as well. So, we're going to start off with the Necrons. Necrons, for their army list, I'm choosing some custom dynasties. So, for their ancient dynasties, they're going with the Pitiless Hunters, and for the Circumstances of Awakening, they're going for the Relentless Expansionists. Now, I'm using a patrol detachment here, so I've got two HQ choices that I've chosen to take that is the maximum that I can take in this detachment, which is an Overlord with a Hyperphase Glaive and Tachyon Arrow. Now, he is 6 power level. He's also going to be my army's Warlord, which I've chosen the Warlord trait Thrall of the Silent King for him. The second HQ choice that I'm taking is the Scorpec Lord, which comes in at 7 power level. With a Relic, however, I've chosen to take the army's free Relic and give it to him, giving him the Veil of Darkness. Now, coming to troops, I do need a minimum of one troop in a combat patrol, but I've chosen to take two here. I've taken two units of 20 Necron Warriors with Gorse Flayers, both of which are 12 power level each for a total of 24 power in troops. Then, when it comes to elites, I've chosen to take a Canoptic Reanimator at six power level to help buff up the troops. I've also chosen to take three Scorpec Destroyers at five power level to go with my Scorpec Lord. And then in Fast Attack to round out the list, I have taken three Scarab Swarms at two power level. So, in total, I spend two command points to take the patrol detachment, but I get those two command points back because my Warlord is in the detachment. And it comes in nice and neatly at 50 power level. So you can really see that power level is the easiest one to use because I've just gone, here's all the power level of each of these units straight from the codex. I haven't 
uh, check the latest stuff if the Necron power levels have been updated. And they're all there and it's pretty easy and straightforward. Add it in the Warlord trait, add it in the Relic, and it's good to go to take to the 50 power level game that I'm gonna be playing. Now, this is where I'm gonna show you the difference between power level and points that we talked about in a previous video with the 1,000 point Death Watch army list. Now, I am taking a Death Watch patrol, which does cost me that two command points. However, keeping it very simple, I've chosen to take a Watchmaster as my Warlord. He does cost 130 points. The Warlord trait that I've given him is called the Castellan of the Black Vault, which means he can actually take a, one of a specific list of relics in addition to the free one. So he's chosen to take the Adamantine Mantle. In terms of my troops, I've got two troops choices. So I've taken a unit of 10 Death Watch veterans here, and as you can see, I've got them listed out. So I've got the Watch Sergeant who's got a bolt gun and chainsaw, he comes in at 20 points. I've then got seven veterans that come in with bolt guns and chainsaws as well, coming in at 20 points each. And then I've got two veterans that come with missile launchers. So they're base at 20 points for the veterans, and then pay 15 points per missile launcher, so they come in at 50, uh, 35 points per model meaning the total of the unit comes to 230 points. My next unit in troops is a Proteus Kill Team. It starts off with a Watch Sergeant that has a Bolt Gun and Chainsword for 20 points, and then another four veterans that have also got Bolt Guns and Chainswords for another 20 points each. And then we add in five veteran bikers with Astartes Chainswords, and their base cost are 30 points each. Of course, Chainswords are free, in Space Marine armies, so I'm able to take them as an upgrade for them and not pay the points. So it means that the Proteus Kill Team's points total comes in at 250 points. In terms of elites, I've taken an Apothecary that comes in at 30, 75 points to start with. I then choose the Chapter Command upgrade of Chief Apothecary, which is an additional 35 points in the latest updates. Now, I've given him the army's relic, which is Artificer Armor, and I've chosen to use a stratagem that is called Hero of the Chapter, which is one command point to use. Before the game, I can choose an additional Warlord trait to give to the Apothecary, and I'm choosing the Apo Chief Apothecary's specific Warlord trait, Selfless Healer. I'm then in Elites also taking a Venerable Dreadnought, starting off at 135 points base. I'm then choosing to give it a Twin Laz Cannon for an additional 20 points, and then swap out its Close Combat Weapon with Storm Bolter to a Dreadnought Close Combat Weapon with a Heavy Flamer for another 5 points, bringing the total for the Venerable Dreadnought to 160 points. And then, because I've got some infantry in my troops slot, I am choosing to take a dedicated transport that is a Razorback. Comes in at 110 points, and I pay an extra 10 points to take a twin Laz Cannon, and it comes in at 120 points. So, the army's total comes in at 5 command points. I spent 1 for the Hero of the Chapter Stratagem, as well as 2 for the Patrol, but as my Warlord is in the Detachment, I do get those 2 command points back leaving me with five. And then it comes out at a nice even thousand points. There you have it, ladies and gentlemen. I hope that you enjoyed and understood how I would broke down creating an army list through the detachments and the different types you can take, the battlefield roles of the units in your army that you have to choose from, as well as the examples. And I hope that these examples did help to show you how you go about constructing an army list both for power level and for points. Now, as per usual, if you do have any questions or comments you'd like to add, feel free to drop them in the comment section below, as well as hitting the like on the video and the subscribe if you want to keep seeing this style of content coming out as well. Now that we've gotten through the different types of gameplays, that you can play 40k at, how to build an army list, we're going to start going through actually how to play the game and getting into those core mechanics going forward. So if you do want to see those, make sure you hit the subscription button. But if you'd rather ask me any questions whilst I'm live, I do go live on Twitch three times a week, Tuesday nights, Friday nights, and Saturdays during the day, most commonly uh, on Australian Eastern Daylight Saving or Standard Time, depending on the time of year. And you can ask me there when I'm live or hit the Discord link below as well. Jump in with the rest of the community and ask your questions there also. But ladies and gentlemen, I hope you have enjoyed the video and I'll catch you in the next one.